Hello, and welcome to our webcast, Turning Awareness into Action, What is Missing from Your 360-Degree Feedback Assessment. I uh, just wanted to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we are, are really excited to have you here. Uh, for the next hour or so, I'm going to uh, take you on a 360-degree view of 360s um, to talk about what works, what doesn't, um, why those things don't work, and, and what you can do about that. Um, but before we dive in, let's do a little bit of, of light housekeeping as um, additional people join this webcast here. Uh, so to, to minimize any uh, you know, possible distractions um, with the audio, we've placed everyone on mute as you joined. Um, but of course, that doesn't mean that we don't want you, to, we don't want to hear from you. So throughout the webcast, we're going to um, ask you some questions and ask you to, um, to respond to some poll questions. Um, in addition to that, we would love for you to enter any, any thoughts or questions you have into the chat function. My colleague, Krista Warren, is uh, monitoring the chat entries from, um, from the office as well. She'll be responding to those as they come in, um, or she'll um, kind of keep them in the queue for a Q&A session at the end of the webcast. We'll save about 10 minutes or so to address questions as they come in. Um, additionally, we'd also love to hear from you outside of the, the chat box as well. So I've put in the, the bottom right-hand corner, you'll notice that we have a hashtag there, hashtag 360 series. Um, we'd love for you to share anything that you feel is, is meaningful or interesting that you hear in this webcast, ask questions, um, you, know, you know, share your own thoughts, of course, um, on social media. Um, you'll notice if you search for that hashtag, you'll find some content that um, around 360s that we've been putting out there this week from our blog posts um, and other resources. So, um, you know, check those out as well. Um, great follow-up resources to this webcast to, to learn more. Um, finally, this webcast is being recorded, so we will um, send out a link of the recording to everyone who attended and then about the next 24 hours or so. Um, and you, of course, are welcome to pass that link on to anybody that you think would enjoy the presentation. Um, and feel free to, to pass it on. The more, the merrier. Um, so but before we dive into the, the content itself, let's do a, a real quick introduction. Um, I am Brianne Harris. Um, I'm the presenter today and the country manager for Cubics USA. Um, I lead a team of industrial organizational psychologists and um, consultants at our United States headquarters in Chicago, Illinois. Um, and my background is actually industrial organizational psychology as well. Um, I've spent my career working uh, with uh, talent assessments specifically um, in order to help organizations um, use the assessment strategically to, to help realize um, business objectives um, with regard to selection, talent management, leader, leadership development, et cetera. Um, I've also listed my social media accounts here, so um, I would love to engage with you online after the, the webcast is over. Um, and I've also shared the, the Cubix uh, official Twitter account in the bottom right hand corner. Um, so it's a brief introduction of, of Cubix. Uh, so we're an international talent assessment publisher and consultancy. Uh, we're headquartered in the United Kingdom um, and we were founded in 2000. Uh, to date, we have grown to have locations in 13 countries and we support customers in um, well over 50 countries. Uh, which you know, naturally means that most of our assessments are translated into um, over 30 languages, um, have a really fantastic database of, uh, of data that um, comes from, from all around the globe. What we're best known for um, by far is our, our personality assessment, the personality and preferences inventory. You may have hear, hear, heard of it um, before, referred to as either the PAPI or P-A-P-I, as I say. Um, as well as our um, other talent, uh, talent solutions um, around cognitive ability, um, you know, uh, you know, a personality um, for both high volume as well as um, professional and executive level assessments, um, also live assessments and, um, and even virtual reality assessments. So we have a pretty wide range of solutions around the talent assessment, talent management um, uh, area. Um, today, though, what we're going to focus on is 360 degree assessments, uh, specifically in how to get the most out of your debrief session. So let's um, kind of set the, the path here we're going to take. We, we want to walk you through first, um, you know, just a, a brief discussion on, on the significant impact uh, that a, a really well-designed and debrief 360 can make on a leader's professional development um, and also the, the organization as a whole. 
Um, we're also going to cover some of the common challenges that organizations experience when they try to implement a 360 degree um, feedback initiative um, and how to overcome those. Um, and specifically, we're going to take a really deep dive into how to empower leaders to, to do more than just build self-awareness um, from the assessment results, how to take it to that next level. And finally, we're going to um, offer some best practices, some do's and don'ts uh, regarding delivery. And, uh, and of course, as I said before, we'll, we'll definitely make sure that we save some time for, for Q&A at the end. So um, keep those questions uh, rolling through into the chat function. Um, so before we, we get too much into the, too deep into the content, um, I want to launch a poll here really quickly um, to get a feel for your experience with um, 360 degree feedback assessments first. Um, that way I can, uh, you know, guide where I spend more or less of my, my time in the session and don't spend too much time on things that might be a little bit too basic for you. So feel free to enter those, um, those responses into the poll and um, I'm seeing those come in here. I will um, end the poll and share. Great. I appreciate all of that. Okay. Go ahead and end the poll and share results. Um, so we've, we've got a good range here uh, of individuals. So we um, have some individuals who have a lot of experience, very comfortable. Um, and people who have, have never debriefed a uh, 360 degree feedback assessment. So, um, so good information. We will do a little bit of everything then. So let's start at the, at really the very beginning. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what the value is of, sorry, my screen is not advancing forward here. There we go. Um, so, so, you know, this really helps guide, you know, where we'll spend some of our time here, but let's talk a little bit about you know, developing managers and leaders and really, you know, every individual in the organization as a whole um, and why that's critically important. Um, as I was looking at the, the individuals who registered for the webcast, the, the vast majority of you are in a leadership development function. So um, naturally, you know, this is common knowledge for you, but I think it's important to be really explicit about the value of employee development, both in terms of, of profitability um, impacts on the, the organization, um, you know, the impact on, on you know, bench strength for leadership and succession um, planning, uh, but also in terms of, of talent attraction and, and retention. Um, it's easy to, uh, you know, share back to the business the value of, of you know, employee development and, um, you know, 360 degree feedback as a cornerstone of that by talking about profitability. Um, but I think that there's a, a bigger picture there. So a lot of organizations have, have revised their, their benefits brochures and, and what they promote. Um, and they don't, they, they no longer feature healthcare and, and 401k as the headline, as like the, the, the big um, exciting feature. But now they're really highlighting career development, um, work life balance, um, and those kinds of things as differentiators in their package. Um, it, it's, it's almost as if insurance and, and 401ks and, and you know, pay time off and all those things are really more boxes that are just checked. Um, it's kind of like you're, you're going to go buy a car, you don't ask if they have. Um, automatic um, windows or, or you know, power locks in the doors. You just assume that it does these days. The, the box has been checked, but what else um, is there? And you're thinking about more advanced features. I think that's really the place we're at too in terms of um, you know, employer branding and recruitment marketing. The things that are, are more interesting to, um, to the workforce right now is that commitment to developing an individual um, and, and it's a really valuable commodity in, um, in the industry right now to um, attract and, and retain top talent. Um, in fact, 87% of millennials have said that they make a decision whether or not gonna, they're going to stay or leave a job based on the organization's commitment to their personal development. So they're seeing a big picture there um, and are, are eager to, to receive you know, feedback and direct their, their professional development. Um, they're, they're just looking for a commitment on the organizational side. Um, and that's the long-term impact of, of that, of course, um, the word of mouth with regard to, to recruitment marketing and, and um, all of those things are all tied together to tell a really important story. So if you want to, to you know, attain, uh, I'm sorry, attract and retain top talent, you really got to invest in, in professional development at this point. Um, and a 360-degree feedback is a, it's a really common, um, rich tool 
to start that development process. Um, over 85% of the Fortune 500 companies use a 360-degree feedback um, within the, the overall leadership development process that they have in their organization. Um, so it's extremely common. Um, it is uh, it's, uh, it's typically a cornerstone of those programs, but it varies from, from an organization to the next. Not all 360-degree feedbacks were created equal from a technology standpoint, from a content standpoint. And certainly what we're focusing on today is really that delivery standpoint and, and what, um, what you get out of that experience. Uh, so, so what is a 360? Um, you know, technically, it's, it's an aggregation of feedback from knowledgeable individuals uh, for a particular individual at, at, at multiple levels around that employee. Um, but it's a lot more. Um, you know, so let's talk about some of the features and the benefits that um, everyone experiences by implementing a, a really well-designed, well-crafted 360-degree feedback um, initiative in your organization. So if you're going to invest in, in people development, professional development, you should, you know, you want to make sure that you're investing in the right area. Um, it, it's a cliche, I know, uh, but it's still true that, you know, doctors don't dole out prescriptions uh, and medicine without doing an evaluation. Well, you know, the good ones don't. <laughs> um, but uh, they, they, they're they not, um, you know, assigning the, 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 um, the, uh, sorry, the, the, your solution before identifying the potential issue or the problem. And the same has to be true when it comes to employee development. Um, you know, we should, should certainly not be implementing development assignments, you know, with a, a wide brush stroke without identifying where we need to improve the most and measuring um, effectiveness as well. Um, so finding the greatest need for an individual with regard to their, their development needs is, is really important so that we can um, identify what path to take to make the strongest impact. Um, it's not just a strategic decision. It's, it's, it's really about survival. Uh, in my mind, if you, if you think about it, we could probably take a quick poll right now and just say, you know, think about the last week um, that you've experienced at work. Um, how many hours did you have to devote to your own professional development? More than likely, the answer is zero or, or you know, probably more realistically less than zero, I'm guessing. Um, you know, we, we just don't have a lot of time on our hands when it comes to, um, you know, the, 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 the openness of our schedule at work. Um, the organizations are, are flatter and slimmer than ever, so we just don't have the luxury uh, of time to devote to development that's not going to make an impact, that's not strategic in nature, um, and that won't show results. So we really have to focus our resources and our energy where it makes the most sense. Um, and certainly a 360 degree feedback is a great place to start identifying what those areas are. The value a 360 brings to an individual is, as well as the organization is substantial. So we're gonna take these one by one. Uh, for the individual specifically, it of course starts with, with self-awareness. Um, you know, self-awareness is actually regarded as, as the most underrated um, attribute for a leader. Um, it's one of those things that we sort of assume that an individual that, you know, becomes senior in an organization has strong self-awareness, but that's not necessarily always the case. Um, for sure, you know, it's, you know it, leaders who are self-aware understand their own strengths. They know how to leverage them. Um, they also understand what their blind spots are so they can be more strategic in how they um, adapt to those or build in support mechanisms uh, to to, to mitigate any kind of a, a risk um, or concern that they would have, you know, with, with regard to, um, with regard to that that blind spot, so they can be more well-rounded in how they approach their work. Um, but under, understanding yourself really opens doors to understanding that the actions that you take um, and the responses that they elicit from others, um, and also understanding individual differences, so you can understand the the, the cascading effect of behaviors on other individuals. Um, and, and learn more about what, what that means and, and how you can adjust your own behaviors. Um, additionally, a 360 degree feedback helps provide a, a much more robust picture of the individual. I, I think it creates a, a much more balanced view than what we get a lot of times um, uh, from the feedback that we do receive. Uh, so whether you have you know, one person who's your, your biggest cheerleader um, or one person who it's kind of your, your lifelong heckler, <laughs> you know, the person who is your biggest critic. Um, a 360-degree feedback helps balance out that information, 
helps make sure that the one loudest voice isn't drowning out the consensus from others, um, if there is consensus. So it gives us a, a much better view. It, it helps us define if, you know, maybe one per perspective that while it's loud might be actually be an outlier. And we want to um, consider the, the bigger picture and context um, that we gather from the, the group's feedback. Um, it can also essentially provide a, a crutch for honest feedback in organizations where um, the culture just, you know, isn't, um, isn't strong with regard to providing open feedback and being transparent with one another um, in cultures where it might be um, scare, scary or risky to share that kind of information. Um, a 360 degree feedback provides that um, potentially a safety net for individuals to share critical feedback that's going to make a business impact, but in a way where they don't feel like they would be personally targeted or, um, or um, you know, receive any kind of, of negative response based on that activity. Um, open and, and honest feedback is, is actually more and more rare, of course, as you move up the ladder. Um, so, so senior leaders um, and executives actually gain a, a, a lot of value out of a 360 just because with more power, people become less likely to share their honest thoughts with you. Um, and that can create, um, you know, potentially the, uh, you know, a mismatch between the, the senior leaders, you know, belief in, in who they are and, and how they're perceived um, and their self-identity, because there just aren't as many occasions where um, honest feedback or, con you know, conflicts with the self-image present themselves. Um, nobody's, nobody's willing to, to, you know, stand up and, and deliver that feedback unless it's in this more formal format. So a 360 degree feedback becomes you know, kind of a safe place to share that critical feedback and, and development needs at that level. And also um, you know, a really great place to share those strengths um, as well that everybody needs to, to be able to, to hear from time to time and also learn how to leverage. Uh, when it comes to the managers, um, so an individual who's you know, leading a team, for example, the 360 results offer, offer some data um, and some, something to go from when they're trying to, you know, gain context for, for deeper developmental discussions. It's a, it's a starting place for something that maybe they have a gut feel for or they're, they're concerned about, but they're not sure how to approach the topic um, with an individual. So it's, it's you know, the voice of, of many individuals providing feedback provides a lot of power, um, uh, you know, much more um, power than the voice of, of one individual, and it's, and it's a lot harder to ignore. Um, especially with regard to giving constructive feedback when it's the consensus is high, um, that it's, it's very you know, much more difficult to um, to dismiss that information when it's, it's hard to hear. It also enables managers to move past just telling individuals um, into helping and facilitating growth. So instead of telling you, um, you know, what's happening, what's what's you know what's being perceived or what you need to do, it's really about helping another individual become more self-aware and take those growth steps um, and, and facilitating that process along the way. Um, finally, when we, when we think about development, when, you know, naturally we focus on, on weaknesses and challenges uh, you know, more than strengths, which is unfortunate. Um, I find myself even uh, falling into that trap while I'm presenting on this topic, as a matter of fact. Um, but the, the value of positive feedback is absolutely as powerful as constructive um, feedback. So it's really important to use that 360 to identify you know, both the things that we want to celebrate and extend as, as strengths for an individual and help them um, experience and, um, and utilize them in new and unique ways that they'd never thought of before, um, as well as balance that with some of the, the critical feedback that, um, that likely is present in a 360. Um, at the organizational level, taking a, a, you know, a data-driven approach to, to better understanding your workforce um, you know, examining benchmarks and, and strategically investing in development um, not only just makes sense, it's, it's priceless, um, quite frankly. Um, when implemented correctly, a 360-degree initiative should, should help transform the culture, um, should normalize feedback that highlights strengths and facilitates development discussions um, and facilitates tough conversations. Um, but it's, it's a process, too. Um, I think that we, we have to be realistic in that you know, one round of, of 360 degree assessments with a group of, of individuals isn't going to change um, the culture significantly. It's a process that has to be implemented over time. Um, we'll talk more about, about this in, in a little bit as we, we get further into the content here, but you know, the key is really taking the 360 degree um, you know, project or, or assessment 
um, from an isolated event, a one-time occurrence, and, and really embedding it into the larger developmental design and the initiative um, and making sure that those, those connections between what we're talking about now and this particular debrief is connected to all of the other aspects of, of performance management throughout the um, employee, employee life cycle and, and certainly the talent management life cycle. Um, so, you know, given the fact that, you know, there are significant benefits for, um, you know, for everyone involved in the organization, um, you know, why, why is it then that 360 degree initiatives fail or, you know, maybe not fail is not even really the right word, but just um, fall flat. They don't see, they don't realize their own potential um, and go as far as they, they possibly could um, in terms of, of holding impact. So let's talk about some of the common challenges. Um, and, and pitfalls that we want to avoid as we're as we're you know uh, pushing through a 360 initiative. Um, you know, most of you on this call have probably either just wrapped up or are getting ready to deliver feedback for annual reviews. Um, it's that that time of year. So so think back to how you felt when you were walking into your last annual review meet, meeting, whether it was when you were delivering feedback or one where you were receiving your own annual review um, feedback. Were you were you confident? Were you anxious? Um, were you just generally uncomfortable? Is is typically is the case um, because it's it's awkward. Um, it's 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 like receiving a grade card, but not on what you know. It's a grade card on who you are um, and how others perceive you. So in, in your reviews and 360s, both you know tend to conjure up the same kinds of emotions in other individuals. But the reality is that they wouldn't be as terrifying if we already knew what was going to be said, but we don't. Um, and that's because we aren't great at giving feedback. Um, we, we just don't give feedback. Um, it, it, most individuals think that they give feedback. They, they feel like they're um, you know, good at receiving feedback, but the reality is that the, the, the studies just say that's you know, quite frankly not true. Um, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable to give it. And, and you know, for a lot of individuals, you know, there's some, some cultural implications here, but um, a lot of individuals say that they've never really learned how to receive feedback. Um, so it can be uncomfortable just hearing even positive information. Um, it's not even just about hearing, hearing about our challenges and weaknesses and, and areas we need to develop. Sometimes it's just as awkward to receive that positive information as well. So we avoid it when possible. Um, you know, if we're unsure how somebody's going to take that information, um, if they will use it against us, if, if it's going to impact us later, um, we will avoid giving that, that kind of feedback to other individuals. The, the result of that is we tend to save it all up for one day a year when HR forces us to, to sit down and, and give feedback and document it and you know, put it in some, some very expensive HR tech system. Um, and, and that turns the annual review into an event, right? It's a thing that you have to, you know, just rip off the bandaid, get over with, schedule it, move on. And then we know we've got another, you know, 364 days, uh, to, to kind of put that aside before we have to pick up that, um, pick the ball up again. So it's a checkbox. Um, and, and if the 360 degree feedback isn't designed well, um, you know, a lot of different areas, it can really fall into that same trap. If we don't transform that 360 from an event, the three, you know, not an annual review day, the 360 degree feedback day, um, into an initiative that's tied into the bigger picture. Um, a few of the other pitfalls that, that organizations experience are, um, you know, certainly lack of buy-in. Um, if leaders aren't engaged and aren't supportive of the initiative, then, then the rest of the organization is going to follow um, those indicators. And not only are you, as you know, probably the administrator of that, that 360, going to have to chase leaders constantly to fill out ratings um, for direct reports, which is um, certainly not, not a fun process. But they're not going to take the, the results and facilitate real development. And you really need those, those leaders and those managers to be um, not just committed, but also see the value in what you're trying to do so that they will, will spend their time and energy while they do have you know, a completely full plate and giant business objectives and goals to accomplish, they have to be bought into the value of what this process will, will do for the organization so that they'll, they're incented to or, or passionate about spending the time on development. Um, next, you know, setting the, the initiative off right by developing an effective communication plan before rolling out this 360 is, is critically important. Um, you know, it should be, it should be 
you know, taken like any other change management initiative um, with very careful, uh, you know, crafting of communications, explaining, um, you know, what the 360 is, what it isn't, why it's coming, what the value is, how it will be used, um, how it won't, who will have access to reports. Um, you know, all of those things are really important things to be explicit about when you're rolling out an initiative like this. Um, they, it really sets the stage for psychological safety, um, trust and, and openness to the process, which is, is so important for making sure that we can move past, um, you know, you know, uh, you know, just, just giving feedback to check the box, right? And turning it into another annual review where everyone just gives everyone a three because they're nervous that if you give them more, I don't know, they might get a promotion or, you know, a bonus. If they get them less, are they going to, you know, be put on a performance, uh, performance plan? So if we're not explicit about the value and why we're doing this and, and why being open and honest um, is, is intrinsically important, then we will just turn this into a second in your review. And that's um, certainly not the, not the value that a 360 can provide. Um, next, uh, administrative challenges. Uh, you know, certainly administering a 360 takes effort. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we can deny that. Um, you know, we can't, you know, minimize the coordination necessary to set one up. Um, but the technology can really either help or, or hinder that process. So if a 360 isn't designed to allow a manager to rate all of their team members at once, then the quality of the ratings will likely deteriorate um, just from assessment fatigue alone if they have an, any number of direct reports. Um, you know, similarly, if the leader is going to receive more than one email invitation, um, you know, for each one of their direct reports, listing the, the, the tasks that have been assigned to them, then their engagement is going to, to plummet as well. Um, I think it becomes kind of a, a too long, didn't read moment. Um, too many emails, too much work, I'll deal with it later, which turns into I'll, I'll deal with it the day it's due. Um, and then, again, we're going to breeze through it and, and hit three as often as possible just to, to, get, the, um, to get it off the plate. Um, but every, you know, even if the technology has features that um, facilitate effective administration and a positive user experience, the content of the assessment, of course, matters. Um, the content of the 360 itself has to hit all the right notes, and and there are a lot of them to hit. It has to it has to measure the right competencies um, that tie back to the the business, uh, the appropriate competency model. The items themselves need to be relevant for the role and the level of the individual. Um, and the items have to be, you know, specific and clear enough that it elicits, you know, memories or moments in the, the mind of the rater um, so they can move past just the general concept and into, you know, tangible specific examples of, of behaviors that they've seen. Um, and also the, the items need to be scalable across the organization. So, you know, all of your leaders you know, ideally should be measured on the same leadership competencies, but um, likely there's a difference between what those leadership behaviors look like. Um, you know, for example, here's a, an example of, of really actually our, um, our approach to um, assessing leaders with our 360 degree assessment. Um, so we, we look at 11 areas of, of leadership that are, we believe are our core competencies for leadership, um, but they vary by level, as you'll see across the top. So building a vision, for example, looks very different for a level one team leader than it does for an executive leader or CEO. Um, those are very different experiences. So making sure that we're all assessing the same competency, but structuring the items in a different way so that it's not only just scalable across the organization so you can um, utilize, you know, great people analytics and, and data analytics resources to, to gain organizational insights, um, but also so that the 360 can grow with them so that year over year they can look back and compare um, their progress from, from one year to the next using that same model um, and not switching to a completely different model as, as they grow and take on new responsibilities. So let's launch another super quick poll here. Um, I, I'm a little behind on time, so let's, um, let's just really quickly, just wanna get a feel for what you think your biggest 360 challenges are and the ones that you've delivered so far. I know we have some, some individuals on here who say they have not delivered one previously, so um, we might get some might have a, a challenge getting some information here, but essentially, you know, what are your big challenges? We've covered some of them, gaining buy-in, um, you know, engagement and compliance, you know, not having time to debrief the cost, um, or just is it really on the side of the participants? We've kind of done what we can with the technology and the content, but um, it's the, the individuals in the driver's seat of whether or not they want to, 
to really focus on their own development and commit to that. Let's go ahead and end the polling here. So we have two, two coming out of the top here, which is, you know, participants don't follow through with their development and also no time to debrief effectively. Um, perfect. Well, that's a great segue to, to continue moving on here um, because those are certainly, you know, the biggest challenges that we see commonly with our customers as well. Um, and really what we have to do is, you know, help address some of those wild cards, right? The wild cards are, you know, if the technology is right and the, the content is right, certainly you're going to have individuals who are just argumentative or are not open to the feedback. Um, and and you're, those are a struggle no matter what. But I think that the ones that are um, secret, you know, secret concerns or secret wild cards are the leaders who, who take the feedback and say, oh, it's interesting. And that's a signal to me that this is going to go nowhere. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, means they're they're kind of focusing on you know what 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 do they hear? Huh, that's interesting. But will they do more? And that's that's really the key. Is they're is they're looking at the report. There's a lot to take in. Um, it, it, 360 degree reports and, and feedback deliver a ton of data. Um, and there's a tendency to focus really in on that what what did people say? What did they rank the highest? What did they rank the lowest? Um, but not a lot of questions around why or digging for deeper understanding. And it's really the why that creates impact and drives someone past, hmm, that's interesting, and into what are we going to do now? How do we make change? How do we facilitate that? Um, and in my mind, I think that the, the assessment is just the start. Certainly, it's the foundation, um, but it's, it's, you know, the report's going to tell you what people see, it's, it's, but it's just the start. Um, it starts with, you know, the, the data, the, the consensus, or, um, or maybe the lack thereof, um, from individuals who are, are key stakeholders or um, knowledgeable about your, your performance um, and your behaviors in the workplace. But then it, it has to, the, the real work starts with that high impact feedback discussion that's critically important. And um, of course, development planning that is actionable and, and realistic as well. Um, and that's where we have to unlock the, the big secrets to, um, to leadership development. Um, you know, when, when I think about leadership development, I, I think about, you know, a, a debrief. I, I say this all the time about all assessments, actually. Um, an assessment is really only as good as its debrief. Um, I feel like the individual who's kind of consulting around the topic is um, in such a magical position because it is both an art and a science. Um, and, and the debrief makes all the difference in terms of the experience. When an expert cons consultant facilitates a debrief session, they're able to lead the participant through layers of information and self-realization. Um, they're able to balance that positive and the constructive feedback to, to keep that participant engaged, um, open, listening, learning, asking questions, learning more, reflecting, um, and then coming back for more information. So the goal is to get them there. The goal is to get them to think about the, you know, what else? Uh, what does this mean for me? Why? How? Um, versus just what the Raider said. Because what doesn't inspire change? So, um, so how do we do that? Uh, to, so to unlock development for leaders, we have to help them move past the feedback itself and get them thinking about the other questions. Why? Do I tend to be motivated to behave this way that, that my, um, you know, these, these individuals are, are seeing um, in, in my behavior? Um, how do my behaviors and my, my motivations <clears throat> drive that, that behavior? And, and then you know, if I'm trying to, to make impact and I'm committing to, to making change and being more effective as a leader, where should I spend my time? Um, because sometimes it can be overwhelming thinking about just changing all of your behaviors, um, you know, no big deal. Get, get started on that, and I'll, I'll check in with you in 365 days, uh, right? So we've got to, to really direct a pathway to make this granular and, um, and feasible. Um, so let's take an example here. Um, so let's look at a sample 360 report. Um, we're going to look at, at – what we're going to look at is, is the 11 leadership competencies that we measured in our, our leadership 360. And we rank ordered them from highest to lowest by um, by all the rating, all the raters except for the self rater. Um, so in this report, let's let's say it's Tony Stark just for fun. Um, you know, while he received the strongest rating for external perspective, driving resilience, and building a vision, 
he had lower ratings when it came to collaboration um, in comparison to, to the other competencies. So, um, you know, certainly you're going to focus on the positives, but we're going to dig in also where we see some areas for improvement. So collaboration is one that I, I would have dug into to identify what, what some challenges are that your colleagues are observing. That's the next step I take is to dive into the behavioral statements because then it takes it from this big concept down to something that's tangible. It allows you to direct the focus a little bit better um, and maybe move past that first level of, of defensiveness, if that's the, um, the reaction you're, you're going to get from that particular person. You know, the, the, the what? I'm super collaborative. I am Mr. Collaborative. Collaborative is my middle name. That's what I do. Um, and then we start saying, well, you know, for example, you know, do you build and, and leverage extensive networks across your organization? Um, are you asking other people to, to play a role in initiatives that, that you design? Oh, well, you know, when you say it like that, not necessarily. Um, so it allows you to get tangible, um, just specific statements to consider as they absorb that feedback. But at this stage, we're still looking at, at the what, right? What others observed um, in, in the behavior. So at this point, when we transition into why, what we're really transitioning into is, you know, from observable behaviors to motivations and preferences. Um, so we at Cubic see a value in introducing personality assessment as an additional tool and resource um, at this stage to provide more context. So what that looks like for us, um, for the vast majority of our customers, is administering both the 360 degree feedback as well as the, the PAPI uh, assessment, the personality and preferences inventory. Um, so we're going to walk through an example of what this would look like for, for Tony Stark and his, um, his challenge with collaboration. Um, so the PAPI assessment measures uh, 26 scales, uh, motivational drivers, and, and work styles that impact uh, success in, in an organization. There are, are uh, um, actually, I think uh, there are over 10 off-the-shelf reports we can draw from the, the PAPI assessment at this point. Um, but what we're going to use today for, for this particular discussion is our leadership report. Um, the reason why we do that is, is because it's, it's a common language. So we use the exact same naming convention for the 11 leadership competencies in the PAPI assessment as we do in the 360 degree feedback, um, the, the leadership 360, um, which is our, our off the shelf um, leadership 360. Um, so this interprets the, the PAPI assessment um, results through the lens of our competency model. Um, and and allows you as a facilitator and also the participant themselves um, to to look at both of you know piece, these two pieces of information and not have to do the mental math to identify you know okay if I, if I'm you know struggling with collaboration here what's it called over here well, let's do collaboration so if we look at this report we'll see that in the upper right hand corner here we we notice that um, this is a, a rel relative development area for um, the individual um, and it's telling us that. Um, that while this individual is seen as being, you know, friendly and easygoing, so he's, you know, likable in the organization, um, he's just not engaging individuals in close relationships um, that would, you know, leverage the other individual's strengths um, in order to, um, to, to gain um, insight from others, uh, you know, gain trust and gain, um, um, you know, connections with others to accomplish their organizational goals or support others um, in that same area and just might not be motivated or inspired um, to, to take that action on because it's, it's not a value um, or it's not a, a motivational driver for, for him is to, to create those close relationships. So he'll, he'll struggle um, likely to achieve those, um, those relationships and, and you know, certainly that's important for leadership. It's, um, it's actually one of the, the things that we measure in our potential assessment as well because it's, it's such a, a cornerstone of leadership. So now we're digging into how? How does how do your natural preferences, your natural behaviors, um, you know, how your natural preferences and, and motivations drive um, your typical behavior, and and why? And you know why is that the case? Um, and then that and out allows us to kind of open the door to a little bit more insight into, okay, now what do we do? Um, you know, how do we combat um, what our natural preferences are, or learn to flex and and adapt to more effective behaviors, even if they're not natural for us. So moving through the, the PAPI development, uh, leadership development report, 
we can go into the, the development tips for an area that, that is a, a development area for the individual or leveraging tips for an area that is a strength um, and dig in to find some more tangible um, suggestions for how to address and, um, and improve those particular behaviors. Then, now that we've answered what, how, and why, um, and, and how we're gonna improve, we can go back to the 360. And now we're gonna go down to the, the competency ratings, but look at them from, um, while well, segmenting the responses from each rater category. So as you'll see here, the, the rater category in green is uh, the direct reports um, in this example. And what we can see is that for the, the rater categories, um, or I'm sorry, for the, the competency categories related to um, for collaboration, the group that's the lowest, that gave the lowest ratings were the direct reports. So if I'm gonna focus on where I wanna focus my time and direct my energy to moving the needle the most with regard to, to my, my behaviors and, and being more impactful, I'm gonna spend it with the groups that says I need to improve the most. And, and that really, you know, taken in combination with, you know, now understanding ourselves a little bit better, you know, what's at the core of, of who we are and, and why we do the things that we do, you have the behavioral statements now, you have specific actionable things that you can address, and now you know where to spend your time developing them. All of a sudden, this kind of overwhelming experience of hearing all of my colleagues, uh, direct reports and my boss's perspectives on, on, you know, what do I do and who I am as a person, now I've got a plan of action. Now I've got a place where I can direct my energy, um, where I can become less defensive and just more focused on, you know, I have some development areas. Uh, I know where to, to focus my time. It's, it's tangible, it's real, it's actionable, and it's, um, and it's achievable if, if we can um, focus our energy in the right, right area. So, um, you know, in all of this, you know, again, it's, it's really about that feedback facilitation that leads participants to, to reflect and identify what that workable action plan is and, and commit to that for the long term. Um, you know, unless you've been living under a rock lately, you probably have heard the term sparking joy. And I think that that should be the goal for everyone who delivers 360 degree feedback. How do we spark joy in that experience? Uh, sparking joy is now kind of a, a catchphrase. Uh, if you haven't heard that term, um, Google it and check out um, the, the Netflix series that has kind of gone viral recently, Tidying Up. And it's really a, a concept of um, re removing and reducing clutter from your life um, by taking the things that you own physically, like your, your physical items, holding them in your hand and asking yourself, does this spark joy? And if it doesn't, get rid of it. So can we provide feedback to individuals that is so meaningful, that's so impactful, um, that builds their self-awareness to a level they, they didn't expect, um, that facilitates their own growth um, and engagement in that, that process. Can we provide feedback back in a way that would spark joy to that individual such that, you know, a year from now, this, this 360 feedback report and the, the personality assessment that you might select to go with it aren't sitting in a drawer and, and you know, being, being held in the hand and, and asking, you know, the individual ask themselves, does this spark joy or should I throw this away at this point? Um, that, that experience should be so powerful, so meaningful, um, that even if it's difficult, um, even if it's challenging, even if it's information that you didn't expect to or didn't want to hear, um, if it ha it's powerful enough, um, it can spark joy. And I, and I really believe that the only way to accomplish that is from um, a, a skilled facilitator that knows how to identify um, and deliver feedback to the individual. So let's make that the mission, is, is being able to, to spark joy. <laughs> Um, so really what we're, we're saying is that, you know, combining a 360 with um, a measure of personality can, can help you do a lot of different things, um, provide some benefit to the individual. Um, what we've heard from our customers is that it helps them remove a level of defensiveness um, because instead of just saying like, oh, no, I know myself and that's not how I act. Um, now we've got a little bit more context around potentially, even though we, we may not perceive that that's the way that we behave, why it's perceived that way from others. Um, reduces the attribution bias. So attribution bias is where um, we paint a, a really broad um, generalization about others based on specific things that they do, but we don't do the same things to ourselves. So for example, my, my colleagues might say she's always late, and I would say, no way, I'm super punctual. It's just that, you know, the past couple of weeks, the kids, 
you know, we're out of control in the morning and nobody knows where their shoes are and, you know, they forgot their lunch. So that's why. It's not me. It's the circumstance. Um, having a personality assessment along with the process helps us, you know, kind of really challenge that with, with some data and some context as well. But I think that clear path for change, where you focus your time and your energy, um, is the key here. It really makes the, the feel very actionable, very achievable, and not so overwhelming. Um, see here, let's move on in the interest of time. Um, I think that the next thing that's really important here is, is not just to, to ensure that we've facilitated the, a development discussion that sparks joy, because that's, that's critically important to this whole process, but also taking it to the next level. Um, administering a 360 provides a wealth of information to the organization at large, um, and, and we should be leveraging that anywhere that we, we can. So, um, you know, dashboarding that information so that we can um, analyze it and look at it, slice it and dice it from a number of different ways where we, um, you know, have, have group differences, where we have departmental differences in, in terms of bench strength. Um, changes in the overall um, overall competency um, results from you know you know time over time um, with the selection process and if maybe we need to go back and evaluate what we're doing at the selection level um, you know there are a lot of different insights that we can gain um, by looking at the aggregate results at the organizational level um, and, and a lot of that's driven by of course that, that quantitative data that you're you're gathering naturally by by you know asking for and soliciting ratings with regard to behavior, but um, but there's also qualitative um, qualitative feedback in in most 360s. So um, ours, for example, has open-ended um, text boxes, uh, free-form text boxes rather, um, where we ask open-ended questions like you know what else would you like to share with regard to this individual's strengths, and what else uh, would you like to share with regard to um, to their areas of development. And a lot of times when we are looking at what the data shows us, especially with a group, um, we, we find, you know, the, the data tells one story and the open-ended items provide context or, you know, they, they, they fill in the gap with areas that, um, that may not have been totally clear. So I always try to include that as much as possible. Um, and we, we leverage technology with our 360 that allows us to um, actually um, you know, do, a, do an actual text analysis of that information to provide um, meaningful reports. So not just, you know, looking and trying to identify visually which, which things pop out most frequently, but, you know, we use, we use an actual text analysis tool to identify and provide additional insight there. Um, it can uncover a lot of things. Uh, you know, one thing that it certainly can uncover is, um, you know, some unconscious bias that we don't realize is coming out. The, the words that we use to describe things um, can, be, can be insightful and impactful. So, um, I think it really, taking that organizational approach takes all of this to the next level and allows us uh, to be much more strategic with the information and, um, and address things in a, a much um, larger way. So let's, uh, let's you know, kind of wrap here before the, the Q&A session starts by, by just kind of walking through, I think, what are some, some key do's and don'ts of 360s. We could, you know, honestly probably spend a whole, a whole hour um, or, or more, quite frankly, on, you know, walking through a list of do's and don'ts, um, you know, telling horror stories of, of things that we've heard from, from other leaders that, that organizations have done. But I think that these are some of the big ones that um, are missed a lot. Um, so do, you know, think strategically about who is invited to provide feedback. Um, so one challenge that, that happens pretty frequently if, if there's not a lot of attention paid to who's invited is either A, the individual invites people that they know are going to provide positive feedback, or the individual is not allowed to contribute at all to who is chosen um, as a rater. And then it's very easy for them to dismiss the information outright. Um, you know, oh, he selected all of these random people and they don't even know me. You know, that they work remotely. I only see them twice a year. So it's not a good, um, uh, you know, it's not a good assessment of who I really am as a person. Um, it's choosing those right, the, the right people ensures that we can um, move past that as a, as a common um, would dismiss information. Um, and being transparent about that, transparent about who was invited, not necessarily maybe who completed it because you want to preserve anonymity. Um, but but being transparent about that, those invitations. Um, we want to help participants, of course, leverage their strengths and incorporate those into an action plan. Um, our, our senior consultant, Hannah, was sharing with me yesterday that when she walks individuals through 
a 360 debrief, she always keys in on those strengths and asks them to put those in their development plan as well. Um, it's funny, it's we, we often forget to even, you know, even though we can highlight and showcase um, and, and place importance on those strengths, a lot of times we focus so much more on those challenges um, in the development plan and don't spend any time on, on the strengths. So she has them think about their, their strengths and identify two new ways that they can start leveraging that strength that they haven't done before. And that's really powerful because what it suggests is that this isn't just about, you know, uh, you know, trying to close a gap on a specific area. It's about making you more impactful as, as a whole. Um, and that certainly involves strengths. I think that's, that's really powerful. Um, I think that when you're giving feedback, um, that can be tough to hear. Watching out for nonverbal communication in the participant is, is really critical. Um, you know, not, not necessarily, um, you don't necessarily have to give all of the feedback at one time. If, if the individual seems to be disconnecting or, or struggling with, with hearing and absorbing what you're saying, um, the value, the, the, the entire initiative really boils down to a good experience, getting that feedback and, and being able to reflect and absorb it. So maybe we need to break it up for, for that individual and, and space it out. Um, so being aware of just those individual differences and needs. Um, certainly connecting the 360 to the larger development plan and performance management initiative is crucial. Um, and that's the only way that we transform this from an event into, um, you know, really an integrated process and show the value that we expect the 360 to have. And then also commit to doing this again on a specific timeline. Say explicitly, we're going to do this again in a year and we're going to look for improvement in these areas. Um, and then it becomes less of a um, an event and much more of a uh, an initiative that we we commit to um, and and um, associate resources with. Um, and then also, I think it's really important that as we if we if we are looking at the organizational level to um, draw insights, sharing that with individuals and you know, giving back the same way that we want feedback given back to us. Um, you know, at the individual level, we want to hear what it means to the organization as well. A few don'ts, um, you know, don't stray from the intended purpose. So if we say that we're using this for development, um, turning it into, you know, a way to collect data on somebody who was a challenge um, and use it for punitive measures um, is really, really, really dangerous. Um, imagine, you know, giving one 360 out because an individual is, um, is, is a challenge then everyone else in the future starts getting really nervous um, in the organization when they've been assigned a, a 360 for themselves. So watch the way that the 360 is used because it impacts the culture and what the expectations are around, around the way that it's used next time. Um, similarly, you know, never compromise confidentiality. If you say that the reports, you know, will only be shared between the coach and the individual or the individual and their direct managers, then, then stick with whatever that commitment is that you made to the organization. Um, violating that is a, a really quick way to ensure that um, no one will trust it going forward. Um, and, and of course, we've, we've covered this, you know, significantly so far, but, you know, never just hand over a feedback report. It really has to come with that, that debrief to, to provide that quality experience. Um, don't turn it into a performance review where it turns into, um, you know, you literally talk about performance. Um, it has to be about professional development, um, self-awareness. Um, those are the cornerstones of this experience. Um, and come prepared, you know, don't wing it. I think this is so, so crucial. This is so valuable. A lot of individuals are spending their time um, to, to support this, uh, this initiative. It's certainly worth the time to invest in and in preparing a really good, strong feedback session. So I'm sure that, that Krista has been compiling all of the, the, um, you know, the questions in the chat function as we, we go along. Uh, we only have about six minutes here, but I'll field as many questions as possible. Um, as she's kind of sorting through those, I wanted to put my contact information on the screen just to save some time here. Please connect with me. Um, if you're looking for some more information on, you know, our thought leadership behind 360 assessments, I encourage you to go to our Cubics site um, slash insight. Um, we have a number of great blog posts up there that um, I even wrote a few of those. Um, and, and you can certainly get more information or um, contact me directly. I'd love to, to continue the conversation with you all as well. Krista, do you have any questions uh, that I can field from the, the audience? Yes, we have a lot of great questions in the Q&A, which is still open, um, but uh, let's start with a few. Okay, uh, so here um, they're asking, there's a lot of 360 technology out there. What differentiates yours from any others? Hmm. 
Um, yes, great question. Um, and, and totally right. There are so many 360s out there. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really great question. Um, I think that, um, you know, not every 360 is created equal. So I think that you have to, you know, ask yourself what you want to get out of it um, and then evaluate, uh, you know, what each uh, technology can do. So, so certainly there are some features that I think are, um, are valuable that we offer both, you know, how simple it is for us to, to customize the 360 if you're, you want to go the full customization route, um, you know, selecting your own behavioral statements, um, you know, your own rater categories, uh, your own rating scale, et cetera. Um, or, you know, we are, you know, have developed a, a leadership 360 that's off the shelf, but also scalable, as I showed that, that slide earlier. Um, so it's ready to go. It's a ready to go 360 um, that's been validated um, around those, those key leadership competencies. Um, or we have the, the kind of the in-between route, which is we have a, a list of 53 competencies. You can pick and choose the ones that are most relevant for that role um, and, you know, be ready in a day or so to, to deliver a 360 um, assessment. So I think the ease of use um, for it um, on the administrative side is, is um, very important, but also on the user side. So um, a leader you know, may be asked to, to rate 12 people, you know, a couple of peers, a whole bunch of direct reports. Um, we don't send 12 emails to them. We send one email to that individual with all of the tasks assigned to them. And they can choose if they want to group those individuals together to evaluate them um, at one time, um, which allows us to, to I think, um, identify some more variants as well. Because when you're uh, you know, rating individuals and seeing you know, multiple names on the same screen, you're thinking about them in context to um, how they, they relate to one another. So I think there's some big features there um, that are, are great differentiators that Certainly, we could we could spend a whole hour talking about that. So it would be a great great follow up item for me to to chat with you about. Okay, next question. Uh, you've shown how your personality assessment and 360 tie together, but can any personality assessment be used with the 360 just as easily? Oh yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, I think that you know really at the core of it, what we're saying is. Um, you know, is, is give some more context, you know, talk about who you are as a person and what, what your individual differences are and how they drive your behaviors. Um, we use the, the, the PAPI because obviously it's, it's in our, our toolbox um, to, to tell the solution that we, we offer. Um, and because we've designed our 360 to use the same naming convention um, as the, the competencies in our leadership report. So it's, it's easy for us, obviously. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, if you have a, a, a favorite personality assessment, something that's ingrained in, in your organization and in your culture, um, use what, what works for you and what people um, enjoy. So yeah, for sure, absolutely. Okay, uh, do you offer your 360 in more than just English? Do you have it in French and German specifically? We do. Um, I should have prepared a slide with all the languages. Actually, you know, I might have had a slide with the languages um, on the back end here. Um, yes, yes, I did. I did keep that slide in, in the deck just in case, apparently. Um, yes, we do have French and German, um, as well as um, another of other languages as well. So we can, we can deploy the assessment, the email invitations, et cetera. Um, all in the preferred language of the individual, um, and um, and that can vary based on you know we could have three or four languages all in one um, one three sixty initiative for for one one individual to be rated. So yeah, that's not a problem at all. Mm -hmm. Great question. Okay. Uh, do you require any kind of certification to achieve brief year assessment? Um, we, we do not require a uh, certification for our 360. Um, you know, certainly we suggest, you know, that our, our facilitators be, um, skilled at, at debriefing the 360 and we do, you know, training on our side to help make sure that that, um, that consultant or, or individual is, is ready and able to use the, the, the reports effectively, um, and ethically. Um, our personality assessment, um, does offer certification. Um, it really kind of depends on the individual's experience, whether they need to attend that in person or if um, our, our e-learning modules will be sufficient. Um, but yes, um, we, we offer it um, where necessary. Mm -hmm. I have time for one, actually, uh, one, last, one last question. Okay. Um, can you talk more about uh, the text and analysis you mentioned? Mm, yes. 
Um, yes. So, so the text analysis, um, it's a really great plugin, um, but essentially it allows you to kind of think of it the easiest and, and quickest way to, to kind of, uh, you know, share what it would be like is, uh, if you're, if you're familiar with the word cloud, um, is, is probably a great way to think about it. It's, it's analyzing all of the information being given across all of the text boxes and seeing what the most common phrases are. Um, but it's also an intelligence more than just a word cloud. Um, it's identifying clusters of words that are related. So, um, off the top of my head, nothing's coming to mind specifically, but um, you know, if two, two words are synonymous with, with one another, um, it's going to combine those together um, and, and make, make that rise to the top. So it's, it's a really intelligent text analysis tool that provides a lot of interesting feedback um, or a lot, of, a lot of interesting insights above and beyond um, the, the data itself at a, at a group level. So very, very interesting. I'd love to, to share more about that. Um, well, thank you everyone for, for joining today. We really appreciate it. Again, we're going to send out the recording and the, the slides um, probably by tomorrow about this time. Um, if you enjoyed our webcast today, we would love for you to attend our next one, um, which is just a week away. Um, so we are actually going to do a trends and talent assessments webinar. I know you've been you know, just itching to hear some top trends. We don't hear nearly enough of those lately. Um, but we're actually, you know, we're really focusing on talent assessment trends specifically. So um, we will include a link to um, register for that, that webcast as well if you're interested in our follow-up communication. Um, but thank you so much for attending today. We really appreciate your time. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us um, directly, and we'd be happy to, to support you in any way we can. Thank you so much. Have a great day.